Hi, I'm John with Code VA, and this is a quick you know, lecture uh, tutorial description of collaboration in the context of computing pedagogy. Uh, I'm going to talk about collaboration in, in the computing classroom, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it. Let's jump right in. So, um, Collaboration in programming education is really important. <laughs> there is a stereotype out there of a programmer that kind of sees them as like a, you know, a silhouette hunched over a keyboard typing manically in isolation. Uh, programming in real life isn't really like this at all. <laughs> Most people who code for work or leisure do so in a collaborative way. They ask questions, they work with a team, coordinate with coworkers, uh, talk with other people about design and implementation. Uh, in my view, a typical computing classroom should look more like an art room than like a standardized testing center. Uh, students should be moving around, sharing creative work with one another, and sometimes working together on ambitious or small projects. Um, there are a lot of collaboration frameworks for use in, uh, in, in computing that are common across other educational contexts. And I think it's worth highlighting that, you know, as teachers, you, you really do see the value of collaboration a lot, uh, and there's no reason to abandon it in the context of programming. Uh, you can do think, compare, share discussions where students reflect independently and then share their reflections with the peer and then engage in a class-wide discussion. Uh, this is particularly useful in predict, run, investigate, or modify activities associated with PRIM. Um, you can also do gallery walks after students, cr students create their own work, have them like walk around the classroom, share work with one another, enjoy each other's uh, the things that, that their peers have made. Uh, you can also do peer coaching, uh, where students give one another feedback, troubleshoot problems, or teach or reteach concepts. Uh, this is really helpful when students are making original work, because um, students might have many different problems requiring individual attention from you, and you only have so much of you to go around, right? So peer coaching is helpful to kind of like mitigate that issue. Um, Having a peer coaching protocol for collaboration helps students come to the uh, come to you uh, with collective problems, rather than having to ask you to reteach concepts over and over again to different individuals. Uh, there are also some coding uh, collaboration paradigms that are useful for teachers to know that aren't kind of standard in other uh, domains. So I'm going to talk about two now. Uh, the first one is code review. Uh, in, in code review, uh, a colleague um, or a, a programmer will show a colleague some code they wrote and explain the code. Uh, the reviewer colleague will ask questions, provide feedback, and try to understand what the first colleague did in their program. This process is useful for both people. It requires the person who wrote the code to explain the choices, uh, and it reinforces uh, their understanding and, understanding and highlights ideas they need more support on. And it requires the reviewer to trace someone else's code and uh, gives the reviewer an opportunity to learn a new coding strategy they may not have thought of or engage in some peer coaching uh, to help kind of solidify the concepts that they are really familiar with. Um, to, for, for code review in the classroom, just a couple ideas. There's a lot of ways to apply this. Um, you could facilitate uh, code reviews as part of debugging exercises, where students share the solutions with one another after solving a debugging problem. You kind of get together after solving a problem and do some review uh, of one another's solutions. Maybe the solutions are different, and you can figure out some different strategies for things, and sometimes they're the same. Uh, you can also facilitate code review as part of a long-term project. Um, as like milestones that students uh, hit as they work on their project. If you're working on a project for two weeks, maybe like every other day there's code review and two students can get together and share their work with one another and solidify some, some concepts, get help with troubleshooting, get help with next steps, etc. Um, you can even have students record code reviews and use those as summative or formative assessments over the course of a long project or after a larger project is over. Uh, those conversations are really helpful for getting an understanding of what students are good at and what students need more help with. Uh, a second collaboration paradigm that's useful for computing educators is pair programming. This is where two programmers use one computer and write code collaboratively. Usually you would assign students roles in this pair. Uh, one student is would be like the pilot who writes the code, and one person is like a co-pilot who provides support, feedback, and suggestions. Uh, this is sort of like code review, except they are working together on the same problem like uh, at the same time, uh, and they're, it's not really like an event where they share with one another. They are like partners working on the same thing at the same time. Um, you'd have the paired students periodically trade roles as they work collaboratively, um, and you'd have them work on the same computer at the same time. Um, you can even have like two keyboards hooked up to the computer uh, so that 
both students can type and control the computer simultaneously without having to trade chairs or anything like that. Um, as far as what like specific activities uh, that include pair programming, you could have students work in pairs uh, on modify activities, like from like from Prim. Um, give them a code example. Have them work together as a pair to modify uh, to learn new syntaxes and coding patterns. You could even have uh, students. Uh, design a program collaboratively and make something together over a long period of time. Like instead of 20 minutes of pair programming, like, you know, several hours of pair programming, having students trade off. Um, you could do the kind of same thing where students design projects independently rather than together and then work on each other's projects in pairs. So they're kind of like flipping between projects. Uh, so like one student who wanted to make a, a game, you know, they're pair programming that game. And then one student who wanted to make like a database thing, they can pair program that. Um, really useful. Uh, and having that collaboration is so, so helpful <laughs> in general. Uh, you can use replit.com, uh, the replit editor for pair programming, uh, using their synchronous editing feature. Uh, sort of like Google Docs, where you can type code in the same document at the same time. Um, but if you if you do something like that, you want to make sure that you support students in choosing roles, uh, and and actually sticking to those roles. Otherwise, one student's going to end up dominating and piloting all the time, and that's not helpful for either student. Uh, the last thing to talk about here is collaborative programming projects. Uh, group projects aren't unique to computing education, certainly, <laughs> but it can sometimes be difficult for teachers who are new to coding to imagine what would it would be like for students to work together on a coding project. I've described pair programming a little bit uh, or just now, but um, you probably learned how to code independently, if, especially if you're doing this micro-credential. Um, and it might be hard to imagine well, how it might be different for students who aren't asked to, to do this kind of work on their own. Uh, so one way to uh, facilitate group projects uh, for students is to divide programs up by function. Uh, so you've already, if you know about functions, you know that like it's just like organizing code into chunks. And so you can have students define all the functions that they need to write for their program. And then each student takes a function and works on a part of the program independently before working together to put it all together. Um, you can also have students work in pairs and do pair programming the whole time where you're not really organizing the code into different pieces, but you're just sort of saying, all right, this is a collaborative project, work together and switch roles as you go. So uh, that is uh, kind of a primer on collaboration in programming pedagogy. If you have questions, uh, if you have suggestions or comments, we'd love to hear about it. Get in the comments below. Otherwise, good luck and happy coding.